I still think the M1 MacBook Air is the best all-around laptop on the market today, even four years after its release and two MacBook Air updates and revisions in the book. You should still buy one in 2024 if you were looking for the latest, cheapest, most useful laptop around. And that's the crux. There are absolutely more powerful laptops out there. There are absolutely cheaper laptops out there, but you give something up going to either of those extremes. You either give up your own money, which is the worst case scenario, right? Or you give up features you might want or need. But before we get too far into that, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, iFixit. Personally, I think there are three camps of tech buyers. Somebody that wants the latest and the greatest, somebody that specifically looks for the features needed and darn the price, and three, somebody that wants to buy the cheapest yet functional option that will last the longest. And I do think the M1 MacBook Air meets the needs for two of those groups, like legitimately two of those groups. I'll guess in the comments which two of those are. A few months ago, I wanted to test the hypothesis that this computer is all of the stuff that I said in the front. And I swapped away my MacBook Pro. Can you even see it over there? You can see the corner, this. My M3 Max MacBook Pro 16. I swapped it out for this cheapest MacBook Air. I wanted to see how the M1 Air held up or if it was all just nostalgia around my last four years on YouTube convincing me of how good this was. And darn it, it held up. And just this week, like today, like three hours ago, I came back from a family spring break vacation where I again, only brought the M1 MacBook Air. And on that trip, this just continued its dominance as just an excellent, all around computer. I've made this video so many times in the past that it shouldn't come as any surprise about my opinions on this computer. It's fantastic and it might legitimately be the best laptop ever made. So getting to that first reason, the first reason to buy this in 2024 is the price. Surprisingly enough, the best place to buy this brand new today is not from Apple, it's not from Best Buy, it's not from Amazon, it's from Walmart. You can get the eight core CPU, seven core GPU, 256 gigabytes of storage and eight gigabytes of unified memory model, which is the one that I have, for a staggering $699. That's less than most high-end cell phones these days. Seriously, that's like 40% cheaper than the iPhone Pro and Pro Max. Now, what I was gonna do is I was gonna put a whole part in this section about comparing this price to the competition out there, but frankly, there isn't really any competition for the MacBook Air lineup that's not already inside of the Apple lineup as a whole. And yes, I know that sounds pretentious, and it sounds like I'm some robotic Apple fan that only repeats what Apple tells me. Look, team, I've considered tons of laptops. I've got a closet out here full of laptops. And while I think there is competition from Windows in the higher end slash gaming segment, in this lower end area of actually powerful, useful, small budget options, nobody else really compares. The next reason this is still the MacBook to buy in 2024 is that power. Again, this video is focused on either the features or the budget crowd. This computer still has all of the power that somebody could need that is doing either regular day tasks or even light indie style gaming. I do kind of a lot of light indie style gaming myself. I play RimWorld way too much, just like my WoW classic addiction. Like those are two, when they get their hooks in me, mm, it's in. When you compare the power of the M1 to the M3, the M3 is clearly superior in single core, multi-core, graphics, AI features, etc. But, and this is the philosophical question each of us has to answer on our own, is it worth that much higher price tag? 300 to $400 doesn't, I guess it doesn't sound like a lot in a vacuum, but that's two to three times again how much you spend here. Look, I really like the M3 MacBook Air. It's clearly the best MacBook Air that Apple has ever made, but power-wise, it's only like 1.5 or maybe two times as powerful, and that depends on the style of chip you buy. I just think for those two camps, you could easily say, hey, this is the cheapest MacBook that also has very respectable power to it. Uh, yes, please. Or you could say, this runs my programs exactly the way I want and for the budget that I want, boom. There you go, two camps, they're happy here. It's still highly competitive for the price and the size of this computer. Reminder, I've got the base model with eight gigabytes of unified memory, and I've only ever had performance problems when I go out of my way to cause them. You do have to be a little more cautious about what programs or tabs you leave open at any given time. You can't just have it be a big mess and have everything open at once, as you might be able to do on a MacBook Pro or a larger i5, i7, i9, like or one of the new ultra processors from Windows. But if you have program discipline, you'll also never have a problem here. In actual use, I get okay performance at setting four in WoW Classic Season of Discovery. And when I go to edit YouTube videos on this older computer, I have perfectly functional editing with about average rendering speeds. It's not gonna, look, the power's not gonna blow your mind. The price is also not crushing your wallet. 
it will render at about the same speed as real time, which is about all you can expect on these older chips. So if I can do those two tasks without a hiccup, if you are working in PowerPoint, Project, or any of the Microsoft suite of applications that are mostly hosted on the cloud at this point, you'll not ever notice a problem. And that right there is something that we'll notice more and more, is you don't really need more on-device processing to do modern-like work because all of that is hosted elsewhere. Remember, Chromebooks sell like gangbusters. But four years later, and the M1 chip is still a very competent and competitive SOC. And thanks again to iFixit for sponsoring this video. You can learn how to fix just about anything at iFixit.com. Search through thousands of free repair guides and find the high quality parts and precision tools to fix your phones, laptops, game consoles, and so much more. And if you are somebody that still uses a four-year-old computer, iFixit is the perfect place to go to get the information and the tools to keep it up and running smoothly. This month, they are running their spring sale, which means 30% off iFixit bundles and 20% off select soldering tools. Go to their website today by clicking on that easy link in the description and find your fix. The next reason to continue buying the M1 MacBook Air is the build quality, especially the build quality compared to price. This isn't just a MacBook Air thing, but it helps that even though this is a budget productivity laptop, you aren't getting that budget price based on skimping corners or cutting the physical laptop itself. You've thought of buying a Chromebook before because they cost about the same amount as a night out for the family, right? Uh, which actually, I guess, is pretty expensive anymore. But the second you touch that cheap laptop, the plastic cracks, it works for like two weeks, whatever. This is still built fantastically well. Sure, it's of a design philosophy that Apple's moved on from, but this is solid. It's got all the hallmarks of its generation of design. The sloping body, the aluminum shell, the keyboard. Hey, this keyboard doesn't get enough credit. It was right after the butterfly switch kerfluffle, and this has never so much as given me a single problem all these years later. Sure, the display is smaller compared to the M2 or M3 variants, and it is slightly dimmer at 400 nits of brightness, but holy crap, Everything about the physical nature of this computer is amazing. And I actually prefer this body over the newer ones, mainly because of that angle. Do you see that? Can you see that slight angle? All the new MacBooks are more blocky. And because of that, this might be the single most comfortable word processing device that I've ever seen. And I've been doing this a minute at this point. If there, okay, if there was a close one, the Dell XPS 15s and 17s are really close. That carbon fiber topper feels so good when you were working on meetings, minutes, or school projects. Guess how many times it took me to say meetings, minutes. You see the, enunci the enunciation? That means it was a lot. Sticking with the physical nature of the computer, you also get top firing speakers on the M1 MacBook Air, which you do not get on the new design with the M2 and M3 MacBook Airs. Look at that, top firing speakers. It's probably another personal preference thing, but I really just like top firing speakers. I like when the sound is directed towards me and not like against the table or like front facing, Oh, These speakers, it could just be my bias towards the MacBook Pro speakers because those are so good. Maybe these are better by association, I don't know, I'm not an audio person. The only thing, and literally the only reason to go M3, not M2 MacBook Air, is the ports do work slightly differently than on the M1. On the M3, if you close the laptop and put it into clamshell mode, you can get two external displays supported. You cannot get the same on the M1. This only does one external display. But that's really the only difference functionally. But think really hard if that one feature is worth all of that money we talked about. The next reason to still buy this machine is it's the first MacBook to not contain a fan. Yes, at the time they released this, I thought, okay, Apple's crazy. And it's probably a pretty risky move, especially because the M1 processor was supposed to be more powerful than its Intel equivalent, which yes, it did end up being more powerful. This laptop is dead quiet unless you have music playing or something. The thing to note is I've never had a problem in normal functionality because of that design decision. You'll see lots of clickbait videos talking about how thermally poor all the MacBook Airs are, but generally you'll find that to get those temperature readings, folks were running multiple benchmarks at the same time, or sometimes they'll put it on the hot roof of a building or in an oven or just something crazy. You have to go out of your way to push this computer into thermally precarious positions. If you use it like a sane person, it works great. The only time I get this computer hot is during extended gaming sessions. Yes, I can't ever be too far away from a WoW classic machine. Phase three for Seasons of Discovery was just announced like yesterday. I'm so excited. And if extended gaming sessions are your need for a laptop, 
I'm looking at you, features group. Uh, this is probably not the one for you. Look, not having to worry about annoying laptop fans is so good. I can't stop talking about it. Like, it drives me crazy when my work laptop's like, and let's not forget about battery life. Holy crap, the battery life on the M1 MacBook Air is what started it all for me in the first place. That's not class leading inside of Apple's system, but that's still fantastic in general tech usage. Seriously, other companies still can't match this unless they give their computers batteries either larger than or the exact size of this computer. Plus, and I go out of my way, I think, to say this in every M1 MacBook Air video, you get that battery life and that power at the same time. It's not like a Windows computer thing where you only get the full power when you're plugged into the wall, or you have an equivalently sized computer that doesn't have the battery life to make it through a single morning's worth of Teams meetings. You can travel with this computer anywhere and know that it's gonna make it through whatever you are going to do. Seriously, four years later, and this is so good, I find it hard and sometimes impossible as we see today to recommend newer computers instead of this because they set the initial bar so high. You can get one of the most usefully powerful computers around for so much less money than anything else. I haven't even bothered to make a you should buy video about the M2 or M3 Airs because they'd have to have an asterisk in every section talking about their M1 sibling. If you were looking for a computer today and want to spend the least amount of money for the most amount of functionality, you cannot go wrong buying this. Hopefully, we won't have to come back here and make this same video in 2025. Please, somebody, take the crown from the M1 MacBook Air. And click here to see the other computer that set the bar way too high, the M1 MacBook Pro 14. Click, 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 click. Thanks for watching.